first of all, I'd like to say thank you to Joe Grace for organising this and including me. I remember Flo Longhorn worrying about the future for people with PMLD, um, but I think with uh, PMLD Link, if you don't already subscribe, please do so. Uh, the Raising the Bar conference and the incredibly positive social media uh, presence that we have at the minute. I think it's a very encouraging um, situation. So this is my talk, Communication Ideas for People Who Are Nonverbal, and I run um, my own company called Willow Century Service. So I set up the Willow Century Service when I had my son, and he will be 18 this year. And basically, I've converted my garage into a sensory room, um, and I do a range of different activities, which is why I called myself Willow Century Service, because there's lots of different branches to what I do. So I do... Um, People hire the room. Um, I do sensory sessions for people, one-to-one uh, -one work, small group work. Um, I run courses for people from my house, so three or four people can come and do a course here. Um, I've written a book, um, and I'm also a complementary therapist. I do reflexology, aromatherapy, Thai seated back massage, and Indian head massage, and story massage. Okay, so the most incredible resource available to you is the ability to access all of Flo Longhorn's books, which is a, a tremendous gesture and a fantastic resource. So please check that out. My book is basically lots of lists of ideas of things to do. I like cheap, creative ideas, recycling ideas. One of the things I do on my Sensory Ideas course is we brainstorm a piece of equipment, for example, a bubble tube, and we all have to write down 10 things that we might do with that with that piece of equipment. Um, we also do it with cloths. So, you know, we have 101 ways of playing with a cloth. And here you can see we've made a den using wheelchairs and standing frames and uh, other bits of paraphernalia. I was very lucky. I went to Saudi Arabia with Peter Imray to talk about sensory ideas and sensory rooms uh, with a school out there. They work very differently to us. Um, a lot of the, the specialists, the children go out and see. Um, so they go out for a therapy session and then return to the classroom uh, for, for most of the day. So there's lots of specialists set up and they return into the classroom. So I went to one classroom and this boy was being taken out. And I said, oh, is he going to therapy? And they said, oh, no, 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 he can't do anything. And I was like, then bring him back in. Um, and it was a, a huge different way of looking at this child because this child was incredible. He sat there in his wheelchair and the lady next to him was giving him a packet of crisps. And when he wanted another one, he was looking towards her and reaching out his hand. And so I said to her, you know, sort of, encourage that, put on a little bit of communicative pressure so that he has to ask for another one. And that's him learning and communicating and learning how to communicate. He was absolutely incredible and amazing. And I think it's really important with our PMLD pupils that we look at what they can do and celebrate that. So how do we talk to someone that doesn't talk? So a few ideas here uh, through using our senses, through using music, uh, books, songs, stories, rhymes, poems, um, the use of touch, positive touch, massage or story massage, uh, or physical interaction um, and building on people's favourite things, on their likes and on their interests. That's always the, the best place to start when someone comes to me for the first time um, I talk to somebody who knows them well and find out, you know, what they like and what they don't like, preferences and things they dislike. So a good place to start here is a happiness audit. Um, Flo Longhorn and Richard Hurst have, would have written some. So, yeah, if you Google Flo Longhorn for happiness audit, that's a good place to start.
And here's an example of me communicating with my dog. Okay, I would like to recommend the Hanging Out programme as a way of communicating with people who don't talk. Um, I'll give you a minute to read the slide. So if you Google the Hanging Out programme and Sheridan Forster, you can find the booklet and information about the courses. Um, I think the, the important bit here is how much we can learn from people with PMLD and how we can just enjoy being with them. You know, quality, interaction, time. And this is a picture of me just hanging out with my godson, Timmy. Intensive interaction is another way of communicating. Um, I've put some um, addresses there if people wanted any further information. But intensive interaction is very much about responding to what the person is doing. Um, so if a person makes a sound, for example, um, I would repeat that. And what I'm saying is, I heard you make that sound. That's like your own language, you're initiating communication. I'm going to say that's important that you did that. I'm giving it meaning. I'm going to copy it because it was important. And I'm also there getting in like a two way thing. That communication is interactive and we've got our little conversation without words going on there. Physical interaction. Um, so a row your boat type action doesn't have to be to the row your boat song, but that's a great one for, you know, sort of having to look at someone, pause, wait, pull, push, working together, working interactively. Um, other examples I've got here are um, on a swing. A swing is great because you, you're usually facing the person and that, that lends itself um, with the to in and fro in action, uh, it lends itself to um, intensive interaction while you're doing it or singing or rhymes. Um, the key is on the interaction part, the social interaction. Um, and the other picture we've got is um, of a trampoline. Again, rough and tumble um, provides great opportunities for communication without words. So you might take it in turns to to bounce or um, taking it in turns to go down the slide. Turn taking is a very important part of communication. The skin, the, this is another way to communicate. The skin is the biggest organ we have. Um, the first picture is um, from the hair and beauty show. So it's a huge, massive brush, which is really, really soft. We have things here that can change temperature. We have the heat in a click. Uh, the fan sprays water, so it, as well as having the breeze, it also has a mist of water coming out. A um, couple of examples of resources you could use to do tack pack. Uh, the purple pouch, um, a watch came in that, and I just put marbles in it and tied it, and that's nice for massage. Um, I've put a picture of massage, so we've got massage, story massage, and patting stories. So for patting stories, if you Google Flo Longhorn, uh, you'll find the one she wrote about ladybirds. Um, I use cardboard, Evers Chalot. I keep cardboard just on the shelf in my sensory room, um, and it's great for skin sensation. Often I'll print out a photograph of something, 
um, onto A4 label paper and stick it onto a piece of cardboard. And that's my prop to support a sensory song. So for example, on this one, this is just, you can see the end of a pad of A4 paper. And I would use that for, I can feel the wind blow song as a sensory prop to go with a sensory song. And in the bottom right hand corner, we've got a vibrating hairbrush. Again, adding that set extra sensory element. Carrying on from vibration, we have resonance boards. So I've included this resonance board because it was invented by my friend's dad. And he thinks the resonance itself is of much better quality if you have a round board rather than a square one. So he made one for the school where she teaches and one for the daughter that she's adopted. For information on resonance boards or clunker boards, Google Naomi Rosenberg, who also does the dance massage training. Musical interaction. And I think the ocean drum is, is perfect for uh, the musical interaction idea of having a conversation without words. So someone might tap it and then you would tap it back. Again, showing that you've heard them and you respect what they've said and you copy it. And you want to ideally get into a two-way conversation. Eventually, maybe they might copy you. They might uh, tap their fingers. So you might tap your fingers. They might bang it hard. They might bang it soft. They might bang it fast. They might bang it slow. And it's all about being led by them and um, bringing importance to what it is that they're communicating. Music is another way to communicate. It's a universal language. Across the world, we all have music across the board. Um, I have one client whose brother passed away and he has a video on YouTube of himself singing songs he'd written himself, playing the guitar by himself. When this client watches this, he ceases vocalising and stops and stares at the video. I think he's very reflective when he's watching this. I think it makes him feel very sort of fond and calm, um, so, but he reacts very differently. We all react very differently to different types of music. For example, if um, a happy song came on like happy, we would react very differently to that to if Barbara's Adagio came on. Um, I've put some ideas here of um, some music that we can use with people with PMLD, which are particularly good. The last one is the most exciting thing to happen in the world of PMLD lately is the jam along videos. Now, if you go to Leicestershire Music Hub, and type in carry and Moki, you find the most amazing spot on videos for our pupils. Very little language um, and the language that's on it is great if you could pop it on a Big Mac and people could just join in with it. Um, the music is all set on a pentatonic scale. So whatever everyone's doing in the group setting, whether it's a family or a care home or a school setting, it's all going to be in harmony, in tune. And they're written um, in conjunction with the Thumb Jam app, which is just an incredible app and well worth getting um, so that people with PMLD can create and invent and play and join in their own music. Absolutely wonderful. I cannot recommend it highly enough. Communication. So it's important with communication that we give choices and to start with two choices. Um, quite often we can offer one we know they like and one we know they don't like. Um, and we know they like them and we don't like them from observing, close observation of their responses. We're looking for consistent responses to likes and dislikes. An advantage of the pandemic has been 
I found working with people over Zoom, I can actually see really clearly, probably even more clearly than when I'm working on a one-to-one, some of those very, very slight movements, for example, in the eyes. So it may well be worth, if you're working with someone, videoing them and having a look at that afterwards. So our pictures here, our choices, um, we added strawberry body lotion onto the picture of the strawberry and orange oil onto the orange. And you could use this for drinks, sweets, frozen lollies, jellies or jams. Choice is empowering. If you give someone a choice of hot chocolate or coffee, they have some control over their immediate environment and that helps our self-control, self-esteem. Um, it helps us feel good because we've got some control over what we want. On these two, I added hot chocolate powder and coffee granules to the paint. You could also use this idea um, in sensory art. You could have a sensory shopping list. Um, so long as there's no more than three on it. Flo Longhorn says you shouldn't have more than three smells in one session because then something called tiring happens and they begin to sort of blend together. Like when you walk through a department store and they spray lots of perfumes at you. After a few, they all kind of blur. You could do sensory recipes, sensory stories or books, matching games or just for fun. Smell is incredibly evocative and can take you straight back to somewhere. So for me, smell of my childhood would be tomatoes growing in a greenhouse. And that takes me straight back to my childhood um, because it goes straight to the limbic system and is related to our emotions. It's very quick. It's very immediate. Um, I use it with one of my clients whose friend died. And so we have one song where we spray his aftershave and just smell, remember and reflect. Another way of communicating is through our senses. For example, I'm sitting in my office now. I've got a felt tip pen so I can see the colour of it. I can see the size of it. I can see the shape of it. Um, I can take the lid off and I can smell it. A lot of information coming to me through our senses. And this is how we first learn about the world around us, about our environment. We take information in through our senses, and that is how we learn about the world we live in. So we need to offer sensory experiences all the time. For example, if I need glasses to see, I wouldn't just put them on for one hour a week. And this is what you find can happen in some schools. If someone needs their information provided to them in sensory ways, that needs to be all of the time, not just one hour a week when they have a sensory session. It needs to be the way in which all information is provided. Sensory ideas, a couple of ideas, bubbles, water sprayers, cardboard fans, balloons, wrapping paper, especially holographic wrapping paper and bubble wrap. For any more sensory ideas, feel free to follow me on social media or to email me. Thank you very much and thanks again to Joe Grace. Regarding communication, it's very important that we listen to everybody that works with the child. I have a friend who's a TA and um, when the teacher wrote the reports about the child, she, she wasn't asked any information or any input into the report, uh, which is ridiculous. So it's really important that you listen to everybody, parents, carers, school staff, escorts, everybody that knows them. It's very important to get all of this information collated. Another good idea is to do a day in the life of this person and think about communication opportunities throughout the day. Um, are there places where we can add more choices um, so that we can increase their autonomy? And what this then gives us is we can all then provide consistency, which is key. Another idea is playfulness. Join in, just be together. The power of laughter. Katie White um, runs a company called The Best Medicine. And it's not just about fun. There are physiological and psychological benefits to being playful, to laughter. Um, I did one of her courses once. I had a, a three out of 10 stress score before it. And then after it, I was an eight out of 10. It did me the world of good. So very, very positive. And so my last message to you all, is have fun. <laughs>